This video is brought to you by Sultan Al Sharif. Thank you so much for donating. If you want to support Brekkies yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash Brekkies. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Game Math Theory. Today we'll be exploring the branch of applied mathematics that is referred to as dynamics, which for us means the study of forces. We'll be looking at how you can apply forces to an object in order to make it move, and we'll use these techniques to create a simulation of the effects of gravity in space. So what's a force? Forces can be described as a push or a pull on an object. Let's say we have a friend called Tom. Tom is standing on a railroad track and in front of him is a cart. As Tom begins to push the cart, he's applying a force which makes the cart move forwards. How far the cart moves is determined by how hard Tom pushes, meaning the magnitude of the force, and at the same time by how heavy the cart is, meaning the mass of the cart. But how do we describe this mathematically? Well luckily, we aren't the first ones to ask that question. In fact, it was already in the middle of the 1600s that a clever Englishman started to wonder about it. The name of the curious guy was Isaac Newton, and in 1686 he presented his three laws of motion. The answer lies within the second law. It states that acceleration, which is a change in velocity, is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the object, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate it. Or as he simply put it, acceleration equals force over mass. So let's say that Tom pushes the cart with a force of 400n. The N here stands for Newton and is the standard measurement for force. Let's also imagine that the cart has a mass of 50 kilos. The resulting acceleration of the cart, not counting any friction from the wheels, would then be 400N divided by 50 kilos, which, after a bit of trickery with the units, gives 8 meters per second squared. It can be hard to visualize what an effect such an acceleration has on the cart, so let's instead figure out the speed of the cart and how far it has moved after a certain amount of seconds. If Tom keeps pushing the cart with the same force, it will slowly increase in speed. We say that velocity equals acceleration multiplied with time. So after pushing the cart for one second, it will move at a speed of 8 meters per second squared multiplied with one second, which is equal to 8 meters per second. If we show the speed over time on a graph, we can see that it increases linearly as Tom pushes the cart. We can also get the distance that the cart moves. We say that distance equals half the acceleration multiplied with time squared. So after one second, the cart will have moved a half times 8 meters per second squared times 1 second squared, which is equal to 4 meters. Again, we can show this on a graph to see that the cart moves further away at an increasing rate. But what happens if multiple forces are acting on an object? In our example, another friend shows up called Dwayne. Dwayne works out and is able to push at a greater force than Tom. Because Dwayne pushes in the opposite direction, he will overwhelm Tom and push the cart back. We say that the resulting force on an object is the sum of all the acting forces. So in our case, we have two acting forces, the push of Tom and Dwayne. And the resulting force is the push of Tom, which is 400 Newton, plus the push of Dwayne, let's say that's 600 Newton. But because Dwayne is pushing in the negative direction, the resulting force becomes 400 Newton minus 600 Newton, which is equal to negative 200 Newton. And so the acceleration of the card is negative 4 meters per second squared, making the card move backwards. One of the most interesting things to study when it comes to forces is gravity. Because unlike Dwayne pushing a cart, gravity cannot be seen and yet it is constantly affecting the world around us. In fact, gravity is a force that acts between all objects. That means that when Earth pulls Dwayne down, he's actually creating an equally large pull on the Earth. But because the Earth has a much bigger mass, it doesn't move much. Again, thanks to Newton, we can describe the magnitude of the force that acts on two objects. All we need to know is the mass of the objects that are attracting each other and the distance between them. So let's say that two bowling balls are floating in space. That's probably the weirdest thing I've said today. I mean, what are they even doing there? Are the space monkeys bowling? Let's say that the mass of the first ball is 1 kilo and the mass of the second ball is 2 kilos and there's exactly 1 meter between the center of each ball. We can then calculate the force that we should apply to each object as the mass of the first ball multiplied with the mass of the second ball divided by the distance squared. We also need to multiply with the gravitational constant which is basically just a very small number that helps sort out the units. So if we calculate this out we can see that our two bowling balls will attract each other with a force of 1.33 multiplied multiplied with 10 to the power of negative 10 newtons. This might seem as an extraordinarily small number, and it definitely is, but remember that it will drastically increase as the objects move closer to each other. And try to imagine just how large this number gets when the objects are as heavy as moons or planets. So how do we use this information to simulate the effects of gravity acting on several objects in space? Well, we simply keep a list of all the objects in the scene. Then each frame, we loop through the list, and for each object we will apply a force to all other objects and calculate the magnitude of each force using the formula. 
We can then use our knowledge from earlier to move each object according to the forces acting on it, and the result should look something like this. If you want to play around with it yourself, there will be a link to the source code in the description. That's pretty much all I have to show for this video. If you're interested in learning more about dynamics, there's a link for that in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Math Theory. Let me know what you want to see next. If you want to support the series, you can do so on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October, and a special thanks to Sultan El Shadif, Faisal Marify, and James Kelhound. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash